Hello everyone, we're going to take a look at the music theory behind the study in E minor today. This is one of Francisco Torrega's super awesome studies that will make you play beautifully if you practice nice and diligently. I taught you how to play this piece and if you want to check that video out, you can check out the playlist up in the corner, click on the cards and it will be listed there as well as down in the description below. Okay, so first off, this piece is in 3-4. And we're actually breaking each beat into triplets. So you'll see three notes per beat. One and uh, two and uh, three and... Uh. Now what's important about this is if you, if you look, the note up top, the one that falls on every beat, the high note, that's a melodic line. So what he's trying to get at is actually this... that melodic line. And when you play this, you're actually going to have to play that note a little bit louder than the, the two notes below it. So if you listen, I'm actually playing the high E string louder than my other strings. By doing that, I'm bringing out the melody. So let's take a listen to the first four measures and then let's break apart what these measures are built out of. Okay, so first we have the notes E, and you'll see our E minor scale up above. Of course, you can check out the grand fretboard experiment if you want a little bit further insight into the coloring of the notes. And Music Theory in One Lesson on my channel if you want a little bit more insight into the Roman numerals, etc. So you'll notice our first note, of course, is our white note, our home note. And next, we have the note B, which is the third note of our first triad of E minor. And of course, we're going to be coloring that yellow. So let's color this yellow. What I'm going to go ahead and do is color the rest of the Bs in this measure yellow, just for the sake of time. Now, G, here, this is our dark blue, the third note of the scale, as well as the middle note of the chord and you'll see that everything is either white, yellow, or blue as usual when we have a one chord. So we have our one chord. Okay, so next we have the note A. This note here is our fourth note so we're going to color it green. I'm going to leave this G alone for a moment, and you'll see why. I'm going to color these other A's green, so these are, of course, are our fourth note. We also have our C here. This is our orange, our sixth note of the scale. And F sharp, our second note. And you'll see that this actually does make a two chord. But what is the deal here with this blue note, the G? Well, this note is actually a suspension, which means that we held it over from the last chord and we took a moment to resolve it. And that gives you a nice little moment that you can actually turn into some musical drama. Take a listen. So if you play the G as if it's stressful, because it is, it's held over from the last chord, and then you play where that G goes down to the F sharp, resolving to our two chord, well, then you get a little bit of extra stress that you're applying to the listener. Now 
That is what's called a suspension. Okay, so let's move on. Next we have B. This is our yellow, the fifth note of the scale. And yes, this is a five chord. It's also what's called a five seven chord. So let's talk about where this chord comes from. And you're familiar with the five seven chord from Music Theory in One Lesson. And you can also check out some of my other classical guitar color theory videos that go into this as well. Okay, so the A, this is our green note here. And this note is what makes it a seven. This note, A, is the seventh note over B. So what about this D sharp here? Well, that comes from our harmonic minor scale. The harmonic minor scale is a scale where we take the minor scale, but we raise the seventh scale degree to create a little bit of tension that pulls us back to our one. And of course, music is always about starting on a home chord or note, leaving it to build tension, and bringing that tension back to, to relieve the listener. So if we get our harmonic minor scale and you listen to this last note, which I will pause on, you'll feel how it actually can bring you up back to the one. So that D sharp is our third, the third of this chord, really the second note that you see, that middle note. We have our A here, the green, again. Our 5-7 chord. Now this G here, the blue note, that's just a passing note. So let's color these A's. I'm going to color the D sharps. Then our blue note here, that G, a passing note. Then moving down to the F sharp, which completes our chord. So you notice how he's building these chords, but he's kind of pulling them into each other and mixing them, mixing them around. This is what's called a passing note. A passing note, to be clear, is a note that does not belong to the chord that we're outlining, but we're using it to either move to another note or create a melody. Okay. So let's take a look at the next measure. This is going to be kind of done in four measure chunks. This starting off with our white note. So let's color this white. This is our home note. The 5 7 is resolving to 1. That D sharp and that A are causing that resolution. But instead of giving us an open E, which is kind of what our ear wants to hear, he jumps up to this high B. That B is our fifth note, the yellow note. And this note, of course, belongs to our one chord. And we also have the B here. So this is at an octave. And then the blue note, our G, completes the chord. So what we have is a 1, 2, 5, 7, 1 progression. And Actually, if you saw the color theory I did on Fernando Soar's Opus 60, number 5, that's the, the same opening progression, but these two things sound totally different. Okay, let's take a listen um, to this four measure progression and then move on to the next four measures. These next four measures are essentially the same as the first four, except the last measure ends a little bit differently. All right, so let's take a look at how this measure ends. So we have basically the same thing, but you'll see the last measure is a little bit different. Please note that the, the stack of notes there is white because um, I couldn't color them all in the same stack because of the software. So ending, we have our white note up top which gives us a more final type of ending. Whereas before we had our yellow note, 
which made us want to keep going. So I'm going to play this entire first half for you, and I want you to listen to how the first and second phrases sound essentially the same, except the ending of the first one sounds like it, we want to keep moving, and the ending of the second one sounds more final because we're ending on the one. Let's take a look at the next couple of phrases. This second half here is where all the great moments happen. So let's start coloring our notes here. Of course, we're starting with a one. And included in the one chord is our white, our yellow, and our blue. So let's just get all these colored and then take a look at the melody up top. There's our yellow again, and blue. The dark blue of minor. All right, so the melody up top actually will arpeggiate our one chord. It goes white, blue, yellow. We have So that's our one chord. Then next we're going to get our four chord, and we get another suspension here, kind of like in, in the opening measure. So let's get this colored green for the A. And I'm going to go ahead and color my other A green while we're at it. Now this B here, this yellow note, that is our suspension. So our four chord is made up of A as our root, and then C as the next note of that color, which is our orange note in this key. And then our E, which is white. So A, C, E. And you'll see this B here is our suspension. And that B resolves down to A. And then what we get is another note in the melody going up to C, which does belong to the the current chord, the A, C, E, our four chord, A minor. Now, if we take a look, we've got a lot of orange in this measure, giving us a really kind of sweet sound. So when we get up top here, we get this. So when you play it, you can play it in a way that this B So it's another moment of drama for you to bring out for your listener. Um, so we arpeggiate the chord and we use that high note which we're driving to to act as a suspension. These next two chords are really cool. Um, so first let's talk about the, the next one which is our D7 chord. But this chord doesn't act as a seven chord, as you might think, or a chord built off of the seventh scale degree. It acts as a five of three. Now, what does that mean? Well, that means that this chord is set up so that it builds tension and it releases that tension into the chord that is built off of our third scale degree, built off of the G. And that G also happens to be our relative major. So we get this moment where he builds tension and releases it into our relative major key. And if you know anything about the differences between major and minor, major sounds a lot sweeter and not as dark as minor. So what it does is it gives us a moment where it resolves into a very kind of heaven, heavenly musical place. So let's color our notes here. We have our D. This is going to be a nice dark red. F sharp. It's our violet in this case. We have our C. That's the seventh of the D. 
making it a D7 chord, a 5-7 of 3 chord. A, there, green, completes that chord. This G is just a passing note. That's all that it is. It's just part of the melody going upwards. Get all our C's here. Our A, which is our green note. Another A. Now that's part of the melody. And here we have A, D, and C. So this is still hinting at our D7 chord. And then that is where the D7 here resolves into our G major. But what you'll notice is G major is GBD. We have another suspension here. That suspension with the green note, the A. And that suspension is going to resolve down to the G. So let's color all of the G's here. This suspension, the A, resolves down to the G and moves up a third to our B. And that's the same type of motion we get here. So we get suspension, moves down, up, down to the root of the chord, and then up to the third of the chord. And that goes for here as well. Now our G major chord being blue and yellow, right? And then it's leaving out the, the, the D, which would be our red, but that's not the most important part of that chord. So what we get overall with that part got a really nice sound going into that G major. Let's listen to it one more time and then both of them together. So both of them together. got a really very nice moment here. Now the last four measures of this piece, they are the same as the second line of the first section. And if you need to learn this piece at all, you can check out the playlist that has not only me showing you how to play this piece step by step, but also a performance that I do of this piece so you can sit down and listen to it. Don't forget to take these special moments into account where you have passing notes and suspensions and never forget to kind of look at your music and ask how it all connects. And as always, members of musicandguitarlessons.com get the PDF print off for all of this stuff. So don't forget to subscribe guys. Check out the next video. Definitely do not forget to subscribe and like this video.